Uh, I wrote down some things you said that would make a great title. I'm going to read them. Let okay. me know your favorite, and I will okay. re I'll record the title later. Okay. A, a female biker myself. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> I'm all for that. Trusting the process. If it works, I don't care how corny it is. Falling back in love with that process. Maybe try rocket science, or we're just crazy teenagers. Oh, God, they're all so, so good. Right? Um, I'm kind of partial to not... Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that um but also got, yeah there had us laughing yeah there was there were a few others in there um trusting the process is a good one too yeah um but yeah all any of them would be fabulous which would be your favorite um not that there's anything wrong with it i think that's intriguing okay i think people will, will be attracted by the the humor of it because they'll, they'll know it's like oh okay Perfect. we know the joke Perfect. all right <laughs> Season six, episode 31. Not that there's anything wrong with that. This is Written on the Edge. I'm Vance Bastian here with my co-host, S.A. Baz Collins. Hey! We're really glad you're here with us. Our guest today is Dharma Kelleher. Dharma writes gritty crime fiction about bounty hunters, bikers, and other badass women from a transgender queer perspective. She's the author of the Jinx Baloo Bounty Hunter series and the Shay Stevens Outlaw Biker series. Dharma, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. <laughs> so what was the impetus to go write badass women? Well, I think part of it was um, when I when I first started uh, getting back into writing, um, uh, uh, Sons of Anarchy was really popular. And at the time, I was a uh, female biker myself. Nice. And I was a member of a women's uh, biker group. And uh, I, you know, I, I love Sons of, Sons of Anarchy, but I wanted to see something from the women's point of view, you know, and mm -hmm. not just the old ladies that are riding on the back or, or, you know, doing all that stuff. Right, right, I right. wanted female bikers, badass women. And so um, that's where I came up with the, the character of Shay Stevens, who's, uh, who grew up in an out by, outlaw biker community. Nice. So where'd you get the idea for the detective then? Jinx. Oh, 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 Jinx. Well, oh, she's a, she's a bounty hunter. Um, not technically a detective. Okay. Um, uh, I got the idea from my wife, actually. <laughs> um, what, what, what happened was, um, this was after the first two, uh, uh, Shea Stevens books came out and they were, they were originally published by, uh, Random House's Alibi imprint. And, uh, they decided not to continue the series. So I'm like, okay, now what am I going to do? So I wanted to create a new series. Um, I wanted to take the bold step of writing a series from the uh, perspective of a transgender character, but not a book about being transgender. So it's, you know, it's no more about being transgender than, uh, say, Cheryl uh, Head's uh, books are about uh, being black. You know, it's just part of who the character is. Right. So I wanted to write a trans character. I didn't want to write a police procedural because there's so many police procedurals. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I love reading. I'm reading one now currently. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with I, that. That's where I went with it. <laughs> I'm like, I just picture. flashed back to the 90s. I'm <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. No, I mean, I, I love yada, yada, yada. Um, I love police procedurals. I didn't want to write an amateur uh, detective cozy. Um, and I love, love those two. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to say take something in a, into a new direction and have a little bit more fun with it. And I had read several of Janet Ivanovich's uh, Stephanie Plum series. Mm 
about a um, bounty hunter, although hers are very much kind of a very humorous take on it. Uh, Stephanie Plum's not the most competent um uh bounty hunter and she really is hard on uh vehicles uh people that are familiar with the series i uh, know the the term car death uh, vehicles <laughs> get frequently destroyed in the in her books um and so but i wanted to write something that's a little bit more serious um uh, that had the grit of, say, you know, Sons of Anarchy of my Shea Stevens series, mm -hmm. but from a bounty hunter's point of view. And so I, um, but but it was my wife that came up with the idea because I was like, I want to write a series that's not police procedural, that's not cozy. And my wife said, well, how about a bounty hunter? I'm like, huh, <laughs> yeah, that, that could work. <laughs> so then I had to do a lot more research um, to find out well, how do bounty hunters are they even legal in Arizona? And because they're not legal everywhere, you know. And so um, I interviewed uh, some bounty hunters, women bounty hunters. I'd read uh, a lot of articles about, and so it's not like I just watched, you know, a bunch of episodes of Dog the Bounty Hunter. Because no, <laughs> no, mm. <laughs> no offense to uh, his family, but uh, <laughs> no, yeah. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah, because I, I wanted something that felt um, very authentic, but also engaging, entertaining, and gritty. And so that's that's how I came up with that series. Nice. And book four is out? Book four is out, yeah, Turf Wars. Yeah, that was... <laughs> uh, that was... In, is, I'd been wanting to write that uh, this uh, Turf Wars for quite some time. Turf Wars, uh, the term turf is T-E-R-F. It's an acronym standing for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. It's a branch of radical feminism that doesn't consider to consider trans women to be women. Um, and uh, a certain author of a uh, very popular boy mm. wizard fantasy series. The, the author who shall, shall be nameless. <laughs> he shall not. She shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. Named. <laughs> um, has come out as a notorious uh, uh, transphobe turf, and um, and she won't admit that she's transphobic. Oh, I love trans people. Mm. Yeah, but she doesn't consider trans women to be women. She right. thinks that. Uh, trans kids are being coerced into transitioning and all this craziness. So I wanted to write a uh, thriller in the series that um, addressed this because so much of the false rhetoric coming from uh, TERFs really is is actually 100%, 180% untrue or 180 degrees untrue. So they're saying, oh, trans women are a threat to women. No, trans women are often victimized by women and yeah. by men, of course. Yeah. Um, we're just as susceptible of being sexually assaulted. Um, uh, very, we're, you know, the, the rates of murder of trans women, particularly trans women of color, are at their highest uh, than they ever, as, that they ever been. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, Anytime there's like an incident in a bathroom involving a trans woman, 99.9% .9 of the time, the trans woman is the victim, not the assailant. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, and, you know, it's just, they just, all this rhetoric is, is just so bogus. And I wanted to write a story that addressed that, not that it was like some sort of um, essay or anything like that. The story is very entertaining, very action driven, very story driven. Um, and but it also explores the complexities of the issues as well as the way social media and these rising technologies of uh, deep fake videos um, it it touches on those as well and misinformation campaigns and um, and the way that these technologies are being weaponized against uh, trans people and queer people in general right well and the story itself is uh, very emotionally charged for Jinx. Yes, <laughs> it was so emotionally charged for my wife, who has read all of my books. She who loves all my. She's like my greatest fan, and she had trouble getting through it. <laughs> she's like, I just, it just, it's just hurting my heart. But it all turns out okay in the end. It has a very happily ever after ending. So, um, if you're if you're reading it and you're like, oh, it's just so dark because it goes to some very dark places. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it turns out 
happy in the end. So. All right. Anything else you want to share about it? Um. No, I I I'm just really proud of the, the way it turned out, and then really really happy about how it's been received. So. Excellent. So I know a lot of our listeners have often wanted to include trans characters and they're just afraid of doing it wrong. And one ah. of the topics you brought to us was trans tropes to avoid. Yes. Can we yes. dip into that? Yes. Um, uh, and there's, um, there's a really great, uh, I think it's a Netflix documentary called Disclosure um, mm-hmm. that really explores the history of how trans people have been portrayed in film and TV series yeah. uh, throughout the decades. Um, uh, and things have improved a little bit with shows like Orange is the New Black and Pose, Mm -hmm. um, which especially uh, that they feature trans women of color, um, uh, centering them, giving them agency. Mm -hmm. But some of the tropes that uh, have been problematic over the years is, uh, one of the most common is the trans women as sex worker. Yeah. Um, There are trans women um, and even presumably non-binary people who, uh, because of circumstances, go into sex work. Um, uh, I, uh, it's just sometimes it's just a matter of survival because yes. uh, we're so discriminated against that it's hard to get a job doing anything. Right. Um, so it's, that's, this is not to disparage people who are sex workers, whether by choice or by right. circumstance. No judging. No, no judging. It's, but there's so much more to who trans people are. We're not only sex workers. Right. Um, right. And so, I mean, we're, uh, a lot of us are in various aspects of IT for some reason. Um, I don't know if that's <laughs> because of the way our, our brains are wired, but I know so many trans women, especially that are into IT, are, are in IT of some aspect. My wife was, I was, um, uh, um, Mallory Cooper is, um, uh, and so I mean, a lot of a lot of us are, you know, have that background. But um, but there's, so, I mean, they're trans uh, cops, trans doctors, trans everything. So um, so avoiding that trope is really helpful. Um, another one is uh, trans people as murder victims, um, uh, because it's like the whole classic tragic trope. And I, you know, we saw this in boys don't cry Mm -hmm. and just all these, all these different, uh, she's where, where the murder victim, a a lot of the, um, uh, law and order shows where, Oh, it's, we're going to feature a trans character and they're the murder victim. Oh, okay. Or, or the other, the, the third one is trans character as comic relief. Right. And, Oh, the bumbling around in heels and oh, just oh. yeah. You know, that's one of the, been, that's oh actually God, one of my fa- one of my favorite scenes in Pose was when the trans women were trying to show Pray Tell how to walk in heels. Oh yeah, for his first <laughs> that was one of the best sequences. I, oh yeah, I'm like I mean, that one scene dispelled all of that. You know? <laughs> Showing a gay boy how to do it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, I, I love Pose. I I mean, there were t- there were I will, I'll admit there were times in uh, watching uh, episodes of Pose that I'm like, oh, can I can I continue watching because it brought so much of my own history. I was not mm. part of the ballroom scene. I'm white, obviously, um, uh, but I did transition in the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, in Atlanta. Um, and so I dealt, I had to deal. And, and before I came out as trans, at first I thought it was a gay man um, because I didn't have any language to describe who I was. Right, I mean, right. Mm-hmm. right. So I'm like, well, I am sometimes attracted to men. So maybe I'm just a very effeminate gay man. It turned out no, um, um, because we didn't have anything to give us a perspective of who I might be. There was, right. there weren't really. Right. It, it wasn't in the vernacular. Right. 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 Exactly. So I was in the midst of the AIDS crisis. It is by a miracle that I didn't get sick. Um, and I, I have so many friends that I lost and mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for the friends who did get sick that managed to survive. I, I have nothing but love for, for all of, all of them. 
Um, but it's also it was also an epidemic in the trans community, which also doesn't get talked about. Which right. one, one of the things I loved about Pose is right. they address it's it. not just a gay man's disease. It's it's also in the trans community. Right. And uh, so um, and I haven't explored. I I've touched on it briefly. There is a major character in my uh, Jinx Blue series who is HIV positive. Um, and so I touch on it very briefly. Um, uh, but I may explore that more in the future. I don't know. Um, so, uh, but what was the question? <laughs> oh, the, the tropes. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. um, so, so one of the things that I want you don't to do need us to bring you back. You're doing I, it yourself. Um, <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to do is to tell stories from a trans perspective that weren't about being trans. I do have some storylines, especially in like Turf Wars, where the issue does come up. But most of the stories are about her tracking down fugitives. The The first book in the series, Chaser, was inspired by a real life story um, uh, uh, about Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her mm-hmm. mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. And that was a, a case where a true story that I originally read in Rolling Stone magazine about uh, this uh, young woman, a young girl, really. Um, she was raised believing that she had all these different childhood diseases. She became kind of a, a nonprofit charity poster child. She was on all these uh, fundraiser specials and everything like that. You know, you know, she was in the wheelchair, had the, the bald head and everything like that come to find out that no she was not actually sick that her mother had Munchausen by proxy and she kept taking her child to the doctor with all these faked symptoms and eventually the the child caught on to it when she was a teenager and she just really didn't think that she had much choice and then she connected with this guy and long story short she ended up murdering her mother and 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 going on the run and so I thought, well, that's an interesting story. And, and it was a heartbreaking story because eventually she did go to prison and she really was the victim here. Mm-hmm. She right, did, right. She really should It was a matter of survival. Um, it was a matter of survival. Yeah. I mean, she was being abused for all of her entire life since she was an infant. And so um, I, I wondered, well, okay, I've got this bounty hunter. What What would happen if she was assigned to go after this teenage girl in a wheelchair who didn't show up to her court date and just vanished and and all these other bounty hunters hadn't been able to find her like well how hard could it be for a teenage girl in a wheelchair to escape and so it was like oh wait but maybe there's more to the story and so I thought I'd explore it so it's not a retelling of her story but a what would happen if Mm -hmm. and so the Chaser is not about Jinx being trans. It's about her being a bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Excellent. Good. Because, and thank you for writing the stories about people. Mm-hmm. Yes. We need so many more of those in this world right now. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. I'm really delighted. Um, uh, I There are, there, there's very few uh, trans people in crime fiction Mm-hmm. And I just discovered a new one this morning. She's in the process of writing a thriller. And there's like, including her, there's four of us in all of crime fiction. Wow. And yeah, I mean, it's just, just like, wow, we, we could have, we have, could have pins and, and T-shirts made up. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Our little exclusive club. I mean, there's literally a handful of us. Because there's only four of us right now, and I, I hope there's more because I would love to see more representation from trans guys um, and uh, uh, non-binary people because their stories need to be told and yep, absolutely uh, from from an authentic voice of with lived experience. Because I think that's very important, and I have nothing against. Um, uh, cisgender authors that's non-transgender cisgender authors writing trans characters i am all for that and if you need help ask a trans person for their perspective right right, exactly Um, because they can provide input uh from their lived experience to all the blind spots that you may have about uh terminology because uh, cisgender people um through just not a lack of li- a, a lack of lived experience don't understand the the terminology and sometimes uh the 
uh, what, would, what would you say, um, the history of certain terminology and why it may be problematic. Um, you know, because in since transitioning um, 30 years ago, um, I've seen the language change. You know, originally, uh, like people like myself, we referred to ourselves as uh, male to female. And even the term transsexual is now uh, considered passe, and we prefer the term transgender. Um, and it's there's no ed on the end. And transgender is a, an adjective, not a noun or a verb. There's no transgenderism. And so a lot of trans or not a lot of cisgender people don't understand these subtle points that are very important to trans representation. And so the best way to avoid tripping up and um, causing real harm, because it's not just about offending our tender little hearts. It's about not causing really harm. Uh, really right, and misinformation. Harm. Yeah, adding misinformation to the misin can, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, consult, you know, I, I um, do um, sen what they call sensitivity reads for a fee. About that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not outrageous, but it means that I'm putting in my time and offering my experience and knowledge uh, to help someone else write a better story, a more authentic story. Right. That will right. help hopefully avoid them getting into problems in the future right. when they when they publish. And, and we should probably uh, also put out here that you used to work in publishing. Well, I, I was a journalist. Okay. I, I I was a radio journalist. I was a news director of a really tiny radio station in uh, uh, Conyers, Georgia, which is little, little tiny. I mean, it was like we would look up to WKRP. That's how small we were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was the entire news staff and the morning drive DJ. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. So yes. it's like when I say I was the news director, that was my official title, but. <laughs> <laughs> you directed yourself. <laughs> I directed myself. Yes, yeah. I was the reporter and the morning drive DJ and, and the whole spiel. So yeah, man, the morning meetings must have been hell. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. <laughs> just you and a mirror. Exactly. <laughs> Get in line. You call that a question? <laughs> what kind of interview is that? <laughs> Enough of these softball interviews. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and there were there were a few scandals at the time. Uh, there was, I don't know if you remember, uh, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, the guy who played Cooter in Dukes of Hazard uh -huh. um, was running for Congress when I was working at this little radio station. Okay. And he was running against a, a guy, uh, a corrupt politician, who ironically was named Swindle. <laughs> I kid you not. And this guy was totally corrupt. Well, at least Absolutely he fully corrupt. believed in his in his marketing. <laughs> he was, yeah. He, Sw Swindle was well named. I mean, whew. <laughs> And so it's like I was covering these stories, and it's like it was it was interesting covering these stories. And then there was like the paid advertiser was like, "We're gonna really run this ad." I mean, you know, this is not true, right? It's like, well, they're paying for the airtime. I'm like, okay. Wow. <laughs> and then you know they'd run the ad, and then I'd run a, a news story. I was like, by the way, uh, Representative P uh, Pat Swindoll <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> just got indicted. <laughs> just so yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, right, exactly. So if someone does want to find a sensitivity reader, uh, where should they look? I mean, uh, they can yeah, where do you guys hang out? What donut shop, yeah. donut shop do they have to go to to find Exactly. <laughs> we could easily fit into a donut shop, let me tell you. Um, uh, well, you know, uh, there's if, – if you don't know any trans people, and you probably would be surprised to find out that you do and you, you just don't realize mm -hmm. that they're trans. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can certainly reach out to me um, and I specialize in crime fiction, but I read other genres too. So, um, and I'm at dharmakelleher.com or I'm on Facebook and occasionally Twitter. Um, uh, or, but there are a lot of trans people uh, that are more visible now than, they, than we used to be. So, which is a double-edged sword. So, you know, being more visible means we're also more vulnerable too. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but reach out and say, look, this is uh, what I've written. Um, I want to um, make sure that I, I don't cause any harm with the way this character is portrayed. I want to make sure that it it feels authentic. Um, trans uh, sensitive sensitivity readers uh, cannot give you a pass, so you may still get blowback. 
you know, there may there may be somebody that says, you know what, this character still feels authentic, doesn't feel authentic, um, or this is this is a stereotype. We don't like this. Um, uh, so I don't give you a pass. It's not I, I don't give you a big stamp of approval, mm-hmm. but um, I can help you avoid problem. Right. And tell a more authentic story that doesn't that is less likely to cause harm. Right. It's a step in the right direction. It is. Can I ask a odd off the wall question? That absolutely. Yes. Um, absolutely. Because you've been visibly out for so long, are people's attitudes getting better? I mean, I know there's problems, <sighs> but I also would like to know. Generally that speaking, yes, but of course, we've certainly seen the rise in fascist, extreme right-wing ideology. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, that has contributed to a lot of blowback. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen an increase in anti-trans bills being introduced in states and state legislatures. Mm -hmm. Although Um, we did get a win. We did get a win with that villain court case in Virginia. Uh, Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... And a lot of it is targeted at uh, criminalizing uh, trans care or targeting trans athletes. Um, trans so kids. Especially tra- trans kids. Yeah. going. Let's go after the most vulnerable people we can right, find. Right, right, right. And make exactly. their already At their most vulnerable lives, moments. At in their, their most life. vulnerable moments. And let's make them even more suicidal than they already are. Right. Yes, that's because that's the Christian thing to do, right? Right, you know? right, right. Right. We want to protect you when you're in the womb, but the moment you're born, oh well, all bets are off. I would, uh, before Trump, I was ho- really hopeful, and um, and then, uh, but with the rise of Trump, there's been so much blowback now that now it's like it's hit or miss. Okay. And, and, and we're here. To be up- we're not going back in the closet. Right, right. And, and and the thing is, I think, you know, we're battling for the soul of America, and that includes all marginalized communities that are learning to network together because there truly is safety right. in numbers as long mm-hmm. as we connect with each other. Um, you know, it's not going to be an easy road. Um, we're going to have to fight like we've never fought before to get where I mean, you know, you and I come from the same generation. You know, I right. I, I was there during the, all the early, you know, pride parades when they really were political activism. Right. You know, and but, you know, we're right back there now. I, you know, yes, uh, it's great to celebrate who we are as a community, but we uh, we need to start going back to the original intent of pride parades to actually talk about what we need to do to work together to keep our rights that we have. So what is up next for you? I know the world's kind of hedging back towards a lockdown. Do you got anything planned? Um, As far as appearances, I was planning on doing a lot of things like, uh, uh, like Phoenix fan fusion. And there's a, a one, some other events locally that I was planning on doing. I wasn't planning on traveling anywhere, Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of events like uh, um, arts and crafts events and author events locally that I was, planning to do uh in the autumn and winter which is where everybody gets out here in phoenix because it's really hot here <laughs> <laughs> right uh, autumn and winter is when we we actually get outside and do things because it's bearable um but with the resurgence i mean i'm i'm fully vaxxed my wife is fully vaxxed um i wear a mask out and, and but you know i i did one event a couple of weeks ago up in payson um, which is a small town uh, t- two hours northeast of uh, Phoenix. And um, I had a lot of fun. I love doing those events. I'm an introvert, but I love doing events where I get to talk with readers and, and other authors. But you know what? It is not worth getting sick over. It really right, isn't. Right, so, right. Don't mess with the Delta. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. So, and I don't want to. Miss risk. Delta is evil. You need to keep yes. away from her. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to uh, have you know, the responsibility of possibly infecting anyone else. Yes, either. absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so, um, so, which uh, you dropped them earlier. Let's give them again. Your socials where people can follow My socials, you. Uh, Facebook, if you go to um my personal uh, page is Dharma Kelleher. Uh, it's like facebook.com, blah, 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 slash Dharma Kelleher. 
Um, and then Dharma Kelleher author, no, Dharma Kelleher books, books. I think it's Dharma Kelleher books now, um, is my official author page. Um, and then Twitter is at Zen, Z E N, punk, P U N K, Dharma, D H A R M A. Um, Love that. I, yeah. it was, yeah, it's a, a long story. I, I used to be a web developer, um, IT, what do you know? Um, All right. and, uh, uh, I created a, uh, I was, I was, you know, punk, I'm a biker chick and everything, but I'm also a Buddhist. So like kind of the Zen punk kind of aesthetic. So, um, I had, I, that's where I came and I wanted just Dharma Kelleher, um, as my handle, but it was too many letters for Twitter. So I'm like, okay, I got to do something shorter than that. So yeah. right. Zen punk Dharma worked. Perfect. All right. Any final words of wisdom? Um, uh, no, I, I'm, uh, read my books if you're into uh, gritty crime fiction about uh, queer women who kick ass. Um, I'm going to be uh, my next book is Breakthrough, which is about creative self doubt. Um, comes out this December. It's up for pre order. Uh, everywhere you can buy it from my website, dharmakelleher.com, or you can buy it from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, Apple, Google Play, everywhere that you buy books, Kobo. Um, and um, I'm in talks with someone about a possible co-authoring project. No, nothing in set in stone, um, but I'm really excited about it. Um, and I was approached on, on this. So um, I think uh, this other person is excited about it and I don't know where it will go, if it will go. I've never co-authored anything with anyone. So, but I'm excited about the possibilities and I'm excited about the idea uh, that this other person has uh, for this uh, book series. So we'll just see what happens. That's awesome. All right, folks, this is Written on the Edge. The Road Podcast is produced by Rogue Ravens Media. For our disclaimers, links to social media, our listening stations, or to sign up as a guest, visit www.rotepodcast.com. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to Dharma Kelleher for being with us. Dharma, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've wanted to be on this podcast for so, so long time. Oh, always <laughs> intimidated because like, am I going to survive the questions? <laughs> oh, We're we gentle. Don't. You are. You we are. Don't bite unless you ask us to. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> then we got a whole dungeon in the back. <laughs> All right, folks, head over to dharmakelleher.com. Look through her offerings because they're good. And... Enjoy your read. Learn something. Broaden your horizons. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.